Hello. In our previous video, we went over a layer 2 Ethernet traffic test. Now, this was a basic test where we were running to a loop and viewing our throughput, latency, packet jitter, and so on. But there are also more advanced tests where you can actually generate reports. One of the most commonly used tests is RFC 2544. So once you have configured your layer 2 test, you can actually initiate an RFC 2544 test from the results screen. You will see down here there is an enhanced RFC 2544 button. Let's click on that button and that will now launch the enhanced RFC 2544 test configurator. You have three options here. You can edit a previous configuration, load a previous configuration, or start a new configuration. Let's go through the third option, which is to start a new configuration. So let's click on the Go button. We're now presented with the configuration screens for the RFC 2544 test. The first option we have is related to what type of throughput test we want to run. Is it symmetric, asymmetric, or unidirectional? For today's training video, we're going to select symmetric. The second option we have is for our measurements. Are we going to take our measurements against a loopback, or are we going to generate our downstream and upstream traffic separately? Today, we will choose loopback, and that's the most common. The most common test you'll see out there is a symmetric loopback test. I'm going to move to the bottom right hand corner here and click on next. Here we can configure our Ethernet frame. You can see if we need to add an encapsulation like a VLAN for example, we can do that here. You can also change the loop MAC addresses if you require. So you'll see here there is a underlined title which is set loop type and MAC address. If we click on that, you can then configure your destination MAC address and also the source type MAC address. So you'll see here our default MAC address, which is the MAC address of this test set, is 0080161. 92, 13 alpha 4. And the destination MAC address, which is the address of the test that we want to generate traffic to, is 0080 16 92 13 alpha 5. Now these addresses will norm normally be automatically populated from the previous configuration we did for our basic layer 2 Ethernet test. However, if you want to change any of those parameters, you can definitely do so by overriding this MAC destination MAC address. So I'm happy with the destination address I have configured, so I'm going to click on the back button, and then I'm going to click on the next button in the bottom right hand corner here. You are now prompted with the option to use a configuration template or not to use a configuration template. Well, you might wonder, what is a configuration template? So let's click on the Yes button, and what you'll see here is, if I expand this drop-down box, you'll see there are a number of templates that give recommendations for pass-fail criteria for throughput, latency, packet jitter, and so on, for different types of circuits. And these templates were recommendations taken from the MEF 23.1. You'll see that we have recommendations for best effort, continental, global, metro, and so on. Let's click on one of these templates. We'll choose metro, for example. And here you can see that for this template, it would now configure our throughput frame loss to be 0.01%, our latency threshold to be 40,000 microseconds, and our packet jitter to be 8,000 microseconds. If you want to apply that template, you can just click on the Apply Template button here 
on the right hand side. But most of the time, you're going to be testing to certain customer requirements or SLAs. So you need to configure that manually because they're going to vary depending on the circuits you're testing. So I'm not going to apply a template here. I'm actually going to click on No and then click Next. And we can now manually configure those parameters ourselves. Here you have the different RFC 2544 tests you can run. We have throughput, latency, frame loss, packet jitter, and a burst test, which are the tests we're going to run today. The burst test is a new test that we have implemented which allows you to test the committed burst size supported by your circuit. Let's click on the next button. Here we can configure the max bandwidth or committed information rate for the test we're going to run. So let's change this and configure this to 500 meg. We'll now click next. Over here you can choose all the different frame lengths that you want to test. We can choose all of them, or we can choose a subset of them. If you see a frame size here that is not what you require, and you actually require a different frame size that is listed in this list, you can actually click on one of those frame sizes and override it with a different value, say, for example, 600 meg. Let's click Next. Here, we can configure the measurement accuracy of the test. So right now, it's saying that it's to within 10 meg. That means if on a 500 meg circuit, I get 491 meg back, that would be classified as a pass. Whereas if it was 489 and below, that would be classified as a fail. So you can make your pass-fail criteria for the measurement accuracy to be more stringent or less by clicking on the drop-down box and selecting an accuracy level. For today, I'm going to choose to within 0.1 meg. Again, we're going to move down to the bottom right, click on Next. Here we can set up the parameters for our frame loss test. The test procedure that we're going to use is RFC 2544. And then bandwidth granularity, we're going to set this to be 100. You may wonder what bandwidth granularity is. Well, what this is, is if at the CIR that we're generating, say in this case 500 meg, I see frame loss, I'm then going to step down in these increments until I see no frame loss. So in this case, I'll drop down by 100 meg, regenerate traffic at 400, check for frame loss, and then drop down by another 100 meg until I don't see any frame loss. This parameter can be configured to be whatever you like, but today we'll choose 100. We'll click on Next once more. Here we can configure our CBS test. The burst type test that we're going to run is a committed burst size test. Over here we can configure the size of our CBS in kilobits. So let's click on this and enter 256. And then down here, we have the duration for the CBS test. We'll leave this as two seconds. So what this is showing me now is we'll run a CBS test with a size of 256, so that's our burst size, and generate that for two seconds and see if we can actually pass that value of 256. Let's click on Next once more. Here, we can configure our test durations. Right now we have a duration of 30 seconds and one trial. That means for every packet size I've selected, I'm going to generate traffic for 30 seconds one time, and in that one 30 second trial, I'm going to measure throughput, latency, and packet jitter. The test will then be run subsequently after this for frame loss and CBS. So you can Customize the duration of your test depending if you want to leave the test running for an hour, two hours, or even overnight. Let's click on Next. 
Here, we can configure our pass-fail thresholds for the test. So if I want to select pass-fail to throughput, I can click on the checkbox. You'll see now that my threshold is 500 meg. So if I receive a value lower than this on my Rx, I would then classify this as a fail. You can enter thresholds for all of these values, that being latency, packet jitter, and burst. We can click on Next. We can then save this test and give it a name so that we could actually reload it and rerun the test at a later stage, thus saving you time and configuration and also making the test very repeatable. To run the test, we just need to click on Go. We can then run our J Quick Check test, which is our sanity check test to check to see if we have a loop in place and then to see if we can generate up to that max throughput we have configured. So by clicking on Start, we're now going to run the J Quick Check test. It's checking our local port settings, and it's detected that it's a 1,000 meg full duplex, and that auto negotiation is enabled on this local port. It's then going to check for a loop on the far end, which would be your other test set. You can see now it's checking for an active loop, which would be another JDSU device that can react to the JDS loop up command. We actually have a fiber loop back today for this demonstration, so it's actually going to find it as a hardware loop. So we're checking for that hard loop. You can see that it's detected the hard loop. And we're now going to measure the max throughput of this circuit. And we can see that the max throughput of this circuit is 1000 meg. Let's click on Next. Once we click on Next, we can actually click on the Run Test button to run through all these tests. It will test at the same time throughput, latency, and packet jitter. It will then finish the test with the frame loss test and the burst test. For today's demonstration, we won't run the test, but we can actually skip over this. And you'll see, once you've completed your test, you would have the option to create a report. You would click on the Go button. You could then enter any information that you would like to that relating to the customer name, technician ID, test location, work order, and any comments. That would then be entered on the first page of the report. And when you come over to here, you can actually name the report, and then you would click on Create Report to create a PDF version of this RFC 2544 report. This brings us to the end of the training video on running an RFC 2544 test. Thank you very much.